welcome back. If you are new here, thanks so much for joining me. As of filming this today, I think there are 150 of you, which I could not be more thrilled about. It may not seem that exciting in the grand scheme of things, but to me, it is so exciting to have each and every one of you here. And so many of you are working on such ambitious projects, bustle gowns and Edwardian combinations. It's just incredible. I think this community is so creative and I'm so thankful to be part of it. If you are new here this week, make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know where you're from and what you're working on. I have so enjoyed the discussion going on in the chat. This video is the latest in the series where I'm creating an Edwardian gown based on a family heirloom. The Wedgwood figurine was handed down to me by my great grandmother and I'm recreating the entire garment from the skin out. If you haven't already, please be sure to click subscribe so that you can see the reveal of the finished gown next weekend. If you are catching this in the middle of the series, make sure to click the link above to go back to the project announcement video where I discuss the history of the figurine and my research for making the gown. We are finally on the last piece of this outfit. This week I am tackling the gown. I will not be giving a step-by-step -step process of how to make this gown, mainly because it is a purchasable pattern that you yourself could buy off of Etsy. And I don't wanna step on the toes of the hardworking artists who created the pattern to begin with. I will be discussing how my gown varies from the original pattern and all of the triumphs and pitfalls along the way. I did want to add that I do have a Kofi account. There's a link in the description below. Please consider donating. Even a dollar helps me to keep creating videos and make even more elaborate projects. There's quite a lot to dive into, so I'm going to hand it off to past Jane, but make sure to stay tuned to the very end of the video so you can get a sneak peek of some of the details and beautiful accessories that I used to finish off this garment. I'm Jane. This is the Rainy Janery. Join me on my crafting and sewing adventures. Hi. I am finally at the point where I'm going to be starting on the dress for this project. I'm very excited. I have gotten all of my pattern pieces printed out from the pattern that I purchased off Etsy. It comes with an incredibly extensive set of directions. Um, it's 15 pages, including how to measure yourself, how to cut out the fabric. I would think that even if you are fairly amateur in your um, sewing, that this would have enough instructions that you could figure it out and get through. So I have printed out the pattern. It's a PDF pattern and taped it all together, which is not my favorite way of patterning something, but because this dress is going to be so heavily altered, especially in the neckline and like the back neckline, the way the skirt hangs and things like that. And I'm going in such a different direction with the trim that printing it off on a PDF pattern kind of doesn't really matter anyway, because I'm probably gonna have to end up making entirely other versions of all of the pieces. So all of my mock-up fabric has been washed. I need to iron it before I lay it out and start uh, cutting out pieces. So I'm gonna do that next. And my, I just went and got my interlining fabric that's in the washing machine getting ready to go. So I've got all my pieces going and we're just gonna launch into this. So we'll check back in with you when I have something interesting to report. So one of the strange things I've run into with this pattern is all of the seam allowance reminders are printed on the outside of the cut line of the pattern. So as you go along to cut the pattern out, you are cutting off your seam allowance reminders. So I had to go through and write seam allowance reminders all the way around it so that I don't forget what the seam allowances are. Also, the seam allowances on this pattern are enormous. I understand that they're trying to provide a lot of flexibility in a pattern, in a vintage reproduction pattern, but like an, there's an inch and a half at center back for a seam allowance and then all the standard seam allowances on this pattern are an inch which is going to be incredibly interesting as i am the largest size i'm the extra large in this pattern these pieces are going to be mahusive so i don't know it'll be interesting to see once i do this mock-up where 
we end up with all of that. I might in the final pattern, once I get the pieces exactly the way that I want them, I might just do like a standard half inch um, seam allowance because that's a, it, it ends up being a lot of fabric wasted if it is something that ends up getting trimmed off. So I don't know, we'll see. Interesting. Hi, so I got the pieces of the mock-up cut out and I decided before I sewed them together just to kind of roughly pin them on my dress form to see how they worked, what it was gonna look like, what things were gonna happen. The neckline of the gown in the figurine is very different to this one. I'll insert a picture here so you can see the difference between them. The bodice is essentially two pieces. There's the shoulder sleeve piece that comes down and creates the side seam here. And then there's the center front piece that wraps around and meets at center back. This piece will actually get cut along this line and come down here. And then this piece, and this piece will be the lace fabric that I got to go up and be the neckline and the, the collar. The neckline in the front here will change. And again, this will be lace and come up and be a lace collar, standing collar. Um, and this piece gets gathered up in the front, which I have roughly done over the top of the corset coverage to see how much volume I get here. The sleeves I think will be great. I need to try them on. I'm just gonna have to extend them out so they come all the way down my arm. I think the only other major change I'm gonna make is the, the skirt panels. Let me rotate her this way. Again, I'll put a picture in here, but the skirt panels on the pattern curve at the front and meet up with the center front panel. And so there are these little tabs here that connect so that the curve has somewhere to attach to all the way along. I think because the figurine dress, they're straight in the front, I'm just going to cut these tabs off and continue these lines down together. And this will also save, this is actually a very strange piece of um, the pattern. And so I think it will actually, yes, thank you, Neville. It will actually save quite a bit of um, fabric, which is great. Those are all the major changes that I'm going to make as of now. Again, I'm gonna actually sew this all together and make sure all the pieces fit. Good morning. I did the thing yesterday where I just worked and didn't film anything. Um, most of the work that I did was on the dress mock-up and really there weren't that many alterations that I had to make. So it was frankly pretty boring. The modifications that I did make, uh, the skirt portion, I just adjusted the darts. Um, but that's actually in the instructions on how to make the dress. So it, that wasn't, that wasn't anything outside the norm. Um, and then I did make some significant changes to the bodice pattern pieces, which I will show you. So this piece was the, well, still is, this piece is the center front of the bodice. The dress has a lower squared off neckline with a lace portion here in the neck. So I adjusted the neckline and cut that out. So this is the new piece for center front. Um, this piece will now become lace. And I also attached a portion from the back bodice, which I will show you. So this is the side bodice and the sleeve. And here is where I cut out that little piece that I attached to the other lace portion. So this will all be a lace inset with a lace collar. Um, the rest of this is all in linen. And so yeah, I made this tiny little modification here. And then the only other major thing I did was extend the sleeve and narrow it ever so slightly. I cut into the pattern here, narrowed the sleeve slightly, and then extended it out. So now it comes out to my wrist. The other thing I did yesterday was I bleached my, the lace that I'm going to use for uh, the neckline. So this originally was kind of an antique color. I have a, actually I have a clip here 
I will insert right now. Hi everyone, I just got this beautiful piece of crochet lace in the mail. Uh, this is going to be the neckline of the 1910s dress. The only issue with it is that it is not as white as it appeared on Etsy website. Luckily it's cotton. So you can kind of see here's an actual white fabric and this is very much an ivory. I just consulted with a friend and she said that because this is 100% cotton, I can probably bleach it. So I'm going to cut a portion and we'll do a test right now and see, see how it turns out. Hi guys, please excuse any noise in the background. The dog is very needy and the laundry is going. Um, this is a mixture of bleach and water. Uh, my friend said to use a three parts water to one part bleach mixture. I have the super concentrated low splash bleach. So I did four to one. It was a quarter cup of bleach to a cup of water. I'm just gonna stick this in there. And I'm gonna set a timer for, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes and come back and see how it does. We'll see if we need to do anything longer than that. Guys, it has not even been maybe a minute or two and it is already, it is already looking lighter than the original color. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see, but I think we are already much closer to white than we were. So I don't think, I don't think I'm going to have to wait 15 minutes. That might be overkill. Well, here is the result. So this is the original and this is the bleach. This was in the bleach water for three minutes, maybe not even. Um, I was gonna walk away for 15 and then it just bleached real fast. So I'm glad I didn't leave it in there for as long. We probably wouldn't even have a piece of fabric left. So here's actual white fabric for comparison. It's not completely white, but it definitely cut down the, it's just a lighter ivory. This this has a lot of pink and warm orangey tones in it. And this is taking it closer to like a really pale ivory. So I think this will be good. I think I feel confident enough to do it on the rest. The last thing I did yesterday was actually start on the fashion fabric for the skirt. Um, I got them cut out and flat lined and the darts hand basted. So today I'm going to keep on, keep on, keep it on with that. Hopefully get the skirt done and then I've got to go in and make all the bodice pieces, um, flat line them and get that going. So yeah, we'll see how far I get today. So I've went into a weird part of the instructions um, on this gown, and I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna go about making this work. Um, I've got the skirt pieces all pieced together and ready to go. Um, I've got all the bodice pieces pieced together and ready to go. And then the next thing you're supposed to do is run gathering stitches along this line here. As you can see, I've already attempted to do that on multiple occasions. And then you're supposed to pin it to the waistband, base the waistband together, and check it for fit. The problem I'm running into is that the gathering line for the waistband is down here. And then they give you this line on the pattern that, oops, sorry, focus, that is supposed to be where the bodice attaches to the skirt. But if you gather it here and not actually at the band, then you have all of this space that you have to try and pin the gathers up to the waistband. Also in the instructions, this line is arbitrary. They say if you want to adjust the fullness of the front, like how pigeon breasted you want your, the front of your bodice to be, then you can move this line like anywhere up or down that you want. So, why put the gathering line here if I'm gonna baste, if 
I'm gonna attach the skirt on this line. I don't know, I'm just confused. And I've tried to gather this like 14 times. And if I run the gathering threads over these huge seam allowances, this part, it won't gather because this is like, it's too thick, it's too much fabric. Um, I ended up having to use, to do it only from seam allowance to seam allowance and use like heavy duty, like buttonhole thread. Um, I don't know, this whole thing is, got me really confused. I have no idea. I'm gonna attempt to put gathering stitches in at this point. I don't know, maybe I'm just not good enough of a seamstress to make this work, but this doesn't make any sense. I also don't understand if this is the bodice, the connection point, I guess they're trying to make it flexible, but like why add an inch seam allowance down here? The bottom of the pattern line was here. There's an extra inch of seam allowance. Then gathering, then, I don't know. This whole thing is just strange. I don't, I don't understand. I will report back when I have moved the gathering and see if that works better. Hi, so I took a break and I practiced some self care and took a walk by the river, had some breakfast, it was lovely. And went back to the instructions and realized that one of the reasons why I'm having problems with this is that you're supposed to be fitting this either on the body or on a mannequin, which is probably one of the reasons why it's not working. <laughs> So I am going to go back to the instructions and follow them just more carefully and see if I can make any more progress out of it. I don't know. We will try it and see how that works out, but they have to have given the instructions for a reason, so... I've reached the portion of my dress where I'm putting in the back placket. Um, this is the neckline up here. Here's our waistband. The dress goes on this way. Um, I've put in the back placket, which they want you to sew buttonholes in this and make this like a hidden buttonhole placket. I decided when I started this dress that I really, really wanted the that kind of Victorian visual of like a million little buttons all the way down the back. So I bought button loop tape and I'm gonna attach that to the back. Instead, I'm gonna kind of bury it back behind so that all you can see is just the very top of the loop. And then once the buttons are in, you won't see you won't see 99% of this. My next step is to attach this to this and then I'm going to tack down um, the inside of the placket to the back to the inside of the dress. They want you to do this and sew all the way through all the layers. I don't know if I'm going to love how that is going to look. I'd rather the back be really smooth. So I'm going to tack the placket down to the dress. Um, it's flat lined anyway, so I can just sew through the cotton and not the linen and have it be fairly secure and not see the stitches from the outside. So I got the back plackets put in and I started working on the closures and this actually has worked out really beautifully. So the placket on this side is just turned under and then I, I hand felled it to the just the interlining um, so you can't see it from the outside, which I think is great. Um, but this hook, or not hook tape, but the button loop tape has been really great. And I think it turned out really well. And when they're all buttoned, you can't actually see much of the fact that they're like much more off-white than the, the dress. The button kind of hides it. And it overlaps nicely, so there's no gap. You can't see anything underneath in the back. And it looks gorgeous. I'm super pleased with that. Closures are not normally my thing. I think the next thing that I'm going to do, which is an alteration of the pattern, is the sleeves are a bit wide still, especially at down by the wrist. And I think what I'd like to do is put in, A, make the wrist tighter so that it's closer to my actual wrist measurement. And then I'd like to put in some more of these little, I have a smaller set of these buttons that I'd like to put in. It has a bit of a slit to allow the hand through and then those button up, which I think will look really nice. There she is all pieced together. I'm gonna take 
this over to my friend's house tomorrow and she's gonna help me with the hem. I think what I'm gonna do is have her mark it and then where the hem falls. And then I'm going to use, I have some cotton organdy that I'm gonna make some big bias strips of, and I'm gonna turn the hem under and then interline it with the cotton organdy just to add some stiffness. This, the linen is gorgeous, it's very drapey. I just would like it to have a little bit more shape at the bottom, so that is my plan. I also have to finish the collar. There will be a, um, a high, a standing collar that attaches on here. I ran out of buttons in the back, so I have to go get some more buttons. And then while I'm at it, I need, I would like to get some smaller buttons to finish this section. I think these half inch buttons are gonna be a little bit large for the lace. I'm also trying to figure out how I'm going to finish the edge of the lace going up. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that. My, my thought process right now is to get a very tiny grow grain ribbon and then fold this under where I want the, the seam edge to be. And then on the back of the fold, just attach a little tiny strip of grow grain ribbon all the way along just to reinforce it and give it some structure on both sides. I think that's gonna be the best thing because right now this lace is crocheted and once you start cutting into it, it just starts to kind of dissolve. So I need something to, to give it a little more reinforcement on the back. So that is my plan. an interesting point um, with the dress. I have the bodice is done. Uh, the hem, I just finished the hem. Neville, say hi. <gasps> hi, Neville. Um, the hem is done. Um, I have all the back closures in. The sleeves are done. No, they're not. I haven't finished the sleeve. The sleeves are almost done. <laughs> Um, and now all I have to do is finish up the collar and do the trim. What I've run into is in the course of trying this on a whole bunch and putting this on and off the dress form a whole bunch, this crochet lace has started to break down really badly. And I'm just concerned about the wear and tear of it over time. Um, I'm not quite sure how I would connect, excuse my band-aid finger, how I would connect this ragged edge to another piece of crochet lace, it's just not gonna be very structurally sound. And if I wanna put any boning in the neck, um, in the collar, it's not gonna let me do that very well. I'm not gonna have a lot to attach it to. So the decision I have made is to, I'm going to back this piece. I have some very thin cotton voile that I'm going to back this piece with and then back the collar piece with. And then when I sew them together, I think that will give it a little bit more structure. I think the other thing that it will help with is when I get to the center back here, it will give me some vertical support this way so that I will have something to attach buttons to because um, I'm gonna continue these buttons all the way up the neck. I also think that it is slightly more, this crochet list is beautiful. Um, but I also think it's probably slightly anachronistic 
in the way that it would be very see-through. So I think that voile will just kind of soften the transition a little bit, which I think will look more period appropriate. I mean, hey, it's all relative anyway, but you know, we try. So I think that is my plan. I'm going to cut out some voile and attach it on here and then do the collar and the collar supports, I think. Lots to do, lots to do. Hi, so just to check in, I got the trim, I got the plackets done in the back of the lace, um, the neckline, and what's the video? Oh, I got the, um, the layout of the trim pieces worked out on the gown as well. I figured out like what size they need to be and all that kind of stuff, which is great. So I then started um, testing the velvet to see what I could get it to do. And I think the piping for the edge is gonna work amazingly. Um, and I don't think I need to cut it on the bias, which is even better because then I, a, I don't have to spend a million hours piecing bias, but then I don't have to worry about seam lines in it and that kind of stuff. It's just easier, it'll use less, less yardage, etc. So I think that's great. Um, and then I started trying to quilt the velvet and my machine doesn't like it and it's like sewing on velvet on the bias and I just got really frustrated <laughs> and I had to walk away. So I'm gonna leave that for another day. Um, probably just kind of focus on house cleaning and other things I need to get done right now. And then, I don't know, I might walk away from this for a little while and make some hats or something. Um, I've just gotten to the point now where I'm not enjoying working on it any longer. It feels like a, feels like work, it feels like a chore. So I don't know, maybe else get that way. I want to, I want to have fun and this currently is not fun. So I also figured out that I did not have enough black thread to do all the quilting and seaming and all of that of the trim. So, um, I'm going to have to get some more of that. So I might just wait until I have a day to go get more thread and just let it sit for a little while. Maybe some ideas will come to me. I can do some internet digging and see if there's an easier way to do this. Potentially, if it ends up being a big enough problem, I won't quilt the velvet, but it, there's such a clear texture of quilting on the figurine that I really want to kind of persevere and see if I can make it happen. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm gonna let it be for a couple of days. And I will see you again when I pick this up. So here are the test pieces of my trim. A little difficult to see, black on black filming is tricky. Can we get a shot there? You can just slightly see the quilting on it, which I think actually has turned out really nice. Um, one of the things I did that gave me some more flexibility and the ability to make it look really nice is I quilted way off. I gave myself a huge seam allowance and then quilted way off the edges. And that just gave me the ability to not have to turn such tight corners and have the quilting or have the quilting stitches end right on the seam allowance, um, on the seam line. So I think that will be really good. This is also very difficult to see, but is the piping, the black velvet piping. Can I even get that into focus? 
I'm not sure. So this was the first bodice piece. I now have a whole bunch more quilting to do and then I have to make 14 yards <laughs> of piping to go all the way around each of these pieces. I will check back in when I have more done or I have lost the will to live. The aftermath of working with velvet is that everything you own is covered in tiny little bits of velvet floof. <laughs> it's going to take a year to clean up all this. So I have all the velvet trim pieces quilted and piped and ready to attach. Uh, but I hit one other snag. So in the course of making this piece, I think what has happened is I flipped the pattern piece for this around backwards. Um, this piece, which is supposed to cross over and attach probably with snaps to this, is obviously incredibly short. The lace ends here and this piece is supposed to be, it's supposed to be down here. It actually, if I fit it, to, if I attach it up here to the front in the right spot, it ends up being incredibly short. It's like two full inches short. And then this side is two full inches long. So I think somewhere in the pattern, it got flipped. This is also supposed to be on this side because this, this side of the dress laps over this way. I am feeling really annoyed <laughs> and pissed off. I just uh, checked all of the lengths of the other pieces and I think they're all fine. I think it's just this piece because it was like a weird U shape just got oriented the wrong way. Instead of doing the U shape again, I think what I'm going to do is get a bunch of strips, like make a bunch of strips pin them all the way that I want them on here and then miter them all at the corners um, so that they fit and then attach it as opposed to making one continuous piece. I think it will just ward off any future mistakes like that and will probably be easier to, to sew on. The other thing that is driving me mad is the velvet is leaving little tiny bits of fuzz all over, I don't know if you can see this, all over the linen. So I'm gonna ignore it until all of the velvet is sewn on and then I'll have to go over it with a lint roller and get rid of it, but. <sighs> and that is where we will leave it until the final reveal. In all honesty, the rest of the trim process for this gown was an absolute nightmare which is the major reason why I stopped filming at this point. The gown and the trim frequently went into timeout for days at a time until I had the courage to come back and try again. Many of these trim pieces were attached, cut off, re-sewn multiple times. Frankly, I'm still not entirely satisfied with the way the trim looks. The velvet and the linen just don't want to play nicely together. Someday I may take the trim off and replace it with something else or just leave it off altogether. But for now, after months of working on this dress, I needed to allow myself to be finished and move on. Noelle from Costume Drama often talks about how it's important to do the thing, but I think it's equally important to finish a thing, even if it's not your best work. I don't want to let this final hurdle color my entire view of this project. Overall, I am thrilled with this gown. Next week, please don't forget to join me for the final reveal and my thoughts on this project as a whole. Hit subscribe and the bell to be notified when that video goes live. Again, please consider donating to my Ko-fi to help me keep creating projects and join me next time for more crafting, costuming, and lots of fun. See you soon.